If you've ever worked on creating or updating a website, especially using a do-it-yourself tool like a Wix or a Weebly or a Drupal or WordPress, you've probably run into a situation that we see a lot with our clients. And that's, it's not necessarily hard to learn how to use that platform and to add in text and photos and things like that. Where the challenge really is, is making it look great. So in this video, what we're gonna do is share a couple easy tips about how to help make your website look really nice. So the first tip we have is to maximize the hero section. Now the hero section of your website is that very top part. You might hear people refer to it as above the fold. Basically it's the section where when people load your website, it's that first part that's gonna take up the screen. Now really this is your attention grabber section of the website and a lot of times where people will make a decision whether to stick around and read more or to bail on your website and go somewhere else. So the first impression is absolutely essential. So what you wanna keep in mind is having this section look really nice aesthetically and really clearly identify who you are and what your business is all about. Especially for B2B businesses, something I personally see a lot is a lot of jargon and we wanna avoid that. When you see hero sections with things like, we provide dynamic solutions and innovative space for such and such, you're like, what are you talking about? And you have no idea what that company does. So if you're able to clearly articulate with images and text and description of your company so people know what you do and if your services or products apply to them, that's gonna help out a lot. Now, don't feel like you need to be an artist to nail this section though. Something that's a really good trick and tip about design is you don't necessarily need to start from a blank canvas. If you can find other websites that have hero sections that you really like, that look really nice, you can dissect those and think about how do you repurpose and recreate something like that for your own website. So for example, if you're a restaurant and you see a website for a competitor that has a big image of a hamburger and some big bold text and you love that, why don't you find a similar image of some really nice food and use a similar font style as well, using your own colors, branding, whatever. You don't need to worry about starting from scratch. It's okay to borrow ideas from other, other uh, sources as well. But in any case, so easy design tip number one for helping your website look really good is really focus on maximizing that attention grabbing hero section. The next easy design tip we have for making your website look great is to design with a visual hierarchy in mind. Now, what does that mean? Now, remember in high school when we had to write a lot of papers and our English teacher said to first start with an outline? Now, personally, I never did that. I always just kind of jumped right into writing the paper. But now that we're grownups and professionals, that still is relevant. And it's really helpful when thinking about how to structure the content for your website. So when it comes to a visual hierarchy, what you want to think about is what are the main sections of your website or a web page? So for example, if you're creating a website that's one page, maybe you first want to have a section that introduces the product and then the features and benefits and then testimonials or things like that. Whatever those sections are, you want to think about that in terms of visual hierarchy and have that consistent. So for example, if there are section titles, having those be more bold, larger, maybe a color that fits with your brand. So those all are set apart and a visitor can easily scroll through the website and read those key sections. And then within that, if you have sub points or smaller sections using consistent font, color, and theme throughout, will help your re readers more quickly and easily find information they want to as well. So again, if your website's easy to follow, commonly the way people view long websites or long web pages are they'll start at the top, check out that attention grabber, and then scroll through. If they find something that looks of interest to them, they'll probably go back to the top and read in more detail. But if you don't have that visual hierarchy, it's harder for those visitors to quickly establish if it's gonna be helpful or not. And if they don't think it is, they're gonna leave your website. So with that being said, the second design tip again is design with that visual hierarchy in mind. The third easy tip we have, which is easy in theory, but sometimes hard to implement well, is use white space. Let your page and the content breathe. So basically what this means is instead of having all of your information and content condensed 
as far as being jammed together, together visually. And granted, we know you've got a lot of things you want to share, pictures you want to show, things you want to talk about to show your expertise. Giving people that visual white space helps keep your website clean, organized, and professional. And also it's in line with modern clean aesthetics that are popular nowadays as well. So some easy things to do. If your website's looking crowded or crunched or like there's a lot going on, add some vertical space, for example. Add some space between sections. Add white space on the edges. Add line height to make the paragraph uh, taller, for example, between the different lines. And when we say white space, we don't literally mean the color white, although that can be as well. Basically, what we mean in a general sense is to have blank spaces. So, for example, if the background color of your website is gray or blue or different shades, you can have just plain backgrounds, and they don't need to be filled up or filling up every square inch of your website as well. Letting it breathe will help give your website that professional, clean, modern look, and also make reading your website a lot easier as well. The fourth tip we have for helping make your website look great is to use great photos. Now, if you can hire a photographer to take photos of your team, your business, your products, that's fantastic. And that's a perfect way to get really nice custom photos for your website. But if you don't have the budget for that or the time or resources for that, that's okay. There are some simple solutions as well. So we can find stock photos online. And I use that word with caution because a lot of times when we hear stock photos, we think of those canned, corny, cheesy photos. Not those. Fortunately, there are good and a lot of times free stock photos that we can find online. Granted, there are a lot of repositories online, but you can just Google free stock photos or free images of fill in the blank. And you can often find really nice professionally done photos that you can use on your website. Sometimes you might need to add attribution, like give credit to the person who took the photo, but that's fine because the price is still right, right? So that being said, some key things to think about in finding really good photos is use people as much as possible. Using images of people uh, can help build trust, make your company seem more personable. But something to keep in mind as well too is congruency across your photos. So you wanna think about what's the vibe you wanna convey in your website. Is it seriousness or innovation or playfulness or family or things like that? So as you select different photos for your website, you one, want to make sure they have a similar look and feel, so they have kind of the same aesthetic vibe or sense going on about them, but you want to make sure they all convey the same emotion as well. So when it comes time to selecting your photos too, of course you want to get high resolution photos, you want to get them as large a size as possible because you don't want grainy photos, and people are going to be viewing your website on desktops, on mobile or tablets. But one other really key trick to keep in mind is something called compressing your images. So if you download a really large image that's really high quality, chances are the file size is gonna be pretty big. And what that means for your website is that when someone's loading your site, it's gonna take a while for that photo to load. So that's what happens when you go to a website and sometimes see the photo like slowly be loaded onto the web page. It's that file size is really big. Fortunately, there are free tools online where you can upload a photo, hit a button, and it will compress that photo. Basically what's going on there is that behind the scenes, it's slightly degrading or reducing the quality of your photo. So the overall size is less, but it's doing it in a way that you can't notice the lower quality by the naked eye. So you still get what looks like a really high quality image, but the compressor basically is making it a smaller file size. So you still get that nice photo, but it loads quicker as well. That was a little in the weeds, but hopefully that makes sense. Bottom line, if you've got really good photos, Search Google for an image compressor and compress and, and reduce the size of those photos as well. You'll be all set. So in any case, the final tip, as mentioned, finding really good quality photos that fit with your brand, convey the right emotions, can add some personality, and also build trust uh, with your potential customers as well. If you're going the do-it-yourself route for updating or creating a website, these design tips can really help make your website look a lot nicer. But that being said, if you're not interested or have the time or capabilities to do it yourself, it might be time to get the professionals involved. And a lot of times where we help out clients is they've got a website that looks nice, 
but they need to take it to the next level and really differentiate and set themselves and their business apart from their competitors. And that's a good point to bring in professionals. So if you have any interest in discussing with Buddy about how we might be able to help or general advice for your website, feel free to get in touch. You can check out our website at www.buddywdd.com. And if you're interested in chatting more, feel free to get in touch on our website as well. You'll see a contact form where you can share a little bit of details about what you're working on and what you might want help with. And from there, we can have a conversation and uh, talk more about what it might look together, look like to work together as well. So again, as always, thanks for your time and talk to you soon.